Professor Yashpal, what are the characteristics of children? How do we create what you're calling as the inquiring mind? And how does science come into their framework when we talk about kids? I think children are naturally curious. In that sense, they are born scientists. They always want to find out. They keep asking questions. They also experiment. When a baby, young baby, sees a little ball, it touches it, it rolls it around, it puts in its mouth, it's trying to find out. So this is an inherent property of humans, that they are curious. So many times I feel it's not a question of teaching, it's a question of ensuring that you do not destroy this inherent capability and build on it. You, you had mentioned something about discovering poetry through science. How does this happen? And How can we help that. children discover this kind of poetry which you see? Well, when you see so many things working together and begin to understand same principles applying, whether you play cricket, you throw a ball, you see something falling, and then you realize that's the same principles which are working exactly. You see the planets go around the earth, uh, the sun. We begin to understand, you say, almost the same principles are working, almost exactly. And when you get a little older, you find that exactly the same things work everywhere. And then you begin to wonder what a fantastic thing it is that we can see things and we can comprehend. To realize then finally that uh, the stuff I am made of was sometimes cooked in the middle of a star, that we are all star children. It has philosophy, it has poetry, it has spirituality. And, and nobody can change it. So it's a spirituality which doesn't arise because somebody said so. It's a spirituality which is inherent in the structure. Einstein used to talk when he talked of theories and ideas. He used to use a phrase, musicality of theories. Musicality. So there is this higher level aesthetics involved, even in science. Without that, science would be nothing. How can we translate this kind of thought? How can we nurture this with you know, kids who are growing up? When the school and the kind of regimentation in school does all to kill it. I know. I think the point is don't keep on harping about musicality and spirituality. Let it emerge automatically through understanding. But if they understand that when they're playing cricket, and they're being very sophisticated. They should also understand there are a lot of things we learn to do which we don't understand how we do it. We don't know how, how what is named the great uh, bowler, Vaughan, is it it? The Australian bowler, Shane Vaughan. How, how does he bowl? There are tremendous number of principles of dynamics involved in this. We learn to do that, we don't quite understand. So it is wonderful to be able to show what is behind it. If you, if you are a spinner, you spin the ball this way and it will go that way. Kyo? You understand it. If you understand it, you combine it with your play, then, and then you are on to it, you will enjoy your cricket even more. What is the status of science teaching in India? You mentioned about tragic consequences of you know, centralized teaching and overloaded curriculum. Yes, sir, the problem is generally, well, I could, I don't like to say in some of our better schools as as good as anywhere else. But uh, we have a problem which comes not so much through teaching, we don't allow enough freedom. It comes through this pressure to score 100%. And you can score 100% not through understanding, but through mugging up. 
And so mugging up takes priority over understanding and that destroys everything. Then on top of that, in order to help you get the last half a percent of marks, you send children to coaching classes. And coaching classes is the worst thing which, is, which could happen to education. Because they know exactly what to do, how to answer, what tricks to follow in order to get that half or one or two or four extra marks. It's ridiculous. These hurdle races are anti-education. And I think we have to somehow escape them. And the pressure which we put right from the beginning, even on children, as if they are preparing for an IIT entrance exam. Even IIT entrance exam, I have maintained and said many a times, the stress which we put children to, through, I think a person who is preparing for an IIT exam, in that process, because of that stress, he diminishes. He doesn't remain as good as he would have been if we hadn't put him through that stress. And afterwards, he's not as good as, was, as he was really born. Samatini, we don't understand what kind of... Uh, first, uh, I think, damage we are doing. And in context of science, what is happening in science, teaching, learning? No, there are people, you know, one comes across people at least in high school level and so on, and I get questions from them which are marvelous. And, uh, and many times I have to sit a long time to think how to answer them. Because when they are addressing me, they are not talking about a teacher who will give them marks, you see. So they ask questions which are, uh, which are very basic. I mean, yesterday I got a question, it is uh, from a 10th, 11th class child in Kurukshetra. She's been a very avid question writer. And she says, when I take an egg, a boiled egg, and drop it, and uh, not boiled egg, a raw egg, and drop it, it breaks and everything spatters. But what is it that it is, everything spreads around why isn't it that sometimes everything should come together and I get a whole egg? Essentially, he's talking oh. about why is there not time reversal? Mm. Why positive time? What's the meaning of time direction? Now, this is a very basic, inherent thing. Laws, rules, so we can do it. There is negativity or positivity. What is it? Then you can go and talk about entropy and disorder increasing and, and the universe expanding, various things connected together. But the fact that a child of 11 years says, why does this not happen? All the things are cut, the energy is cut, all the particles should get together and can move the other way. Yeah. Yeah. We don't keep any room for such We don't keep any room. Any child asks a question like that, teacher says, stupid, sit down.